today we are at Mapperton. This is the nation's finest manor house and our family home. Do you know, Mapperton has not always been the Montague family home. In fact, there was a much larger, almost castle-like home in Cambridgeshire called Hinchingbrook. And unfortunately, that house was lost in 1955. It was actually sold by my husband's grandfather after the Second World War. And the family, and I'm including myself in this, we feel really sad about this because that house had been in the family since 1627. In fact, nine Earls of Sandwich lived at Hinchingbrook. But Hinchingbrook actually wasn't alone. So after the Second World War, so many historic houses were either sold or demolished because they couldn't afford the upkeep of these houses. The cost of, of maintaining these houses was back then and still is today extraordinary. I'm really excited though because I'm actually going to be heading up to Hinchingbrook to see what's happened to it and to look at the fabric of the building and also to look at the history that's still left there. But before I do that, I'm going to meet with my father-in-law and we're going to go through some of the archives because he grew up there. That's where he spent his childhood. And then of course he moved here in 1955. But I want to find out what it was like to actually grow up at Hinchingbrook, at like a castle. And then of course the loss of Hinchingbrook and how he felt about moving here at Mapperton. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge, and every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. The Montague family have always had a connection with Dorset and enjoyed its remote and beautiful landscape. And so it was perhaps a natural choice to move here when in 1955 the family were forced to leave the ancestral home Hinchingbrook House in the east of England. I'm really excited to get stuck in, John, as to your memories of Hinchingbrook before we head off. Um, to see the house itself, but I don't know if I've ever shared this with you. Uh, this was when I was visiting Rockingham Castle and your aunt Faith had written this and this was her memories of, of E.M. Forrester, but in particular of Hinchingbrook. So I just wanna quickly read this to you and then we can kind of go uh, back. She says, after lunch, my father asked me to drive our guest over to Hinchingbrook and show him around the house. So this, by the way, was uh, December 1955. So this was written after Hinchingbrook was vacated. Hinchingbrook was a quarter of a mile down the drive. We drove through the great Gothic main archway and pulled up at the front door. During the war, Hinchingbrook was a hospital. And after the war, my brother, your father, to whom the estate had been transferred, found himself forced partly for economic reasons and much to his regret to sell the property. In 1962, the Huntington County Council bought the house for a comprehensive school. But in December 1955, when Faith went, the great house was empty and deserted. She then continues to say, before entering the house, I took Forster onto the terrace where Charles I and Oliver Cromwell once fought as boys. We stood on the terrace steps and admired the great semi-circular bow window. 
We then wandered across the lawn to see the medieval nunnery and from there into the main house. It was dark and lonely, but beautiful. Every room shuddered and we looked at the furniture and pictures by electric light. Some of the furniture had been taken away, but most of the family portraits, the Hogarth, Lilies, and the Van Dykes were still hung on the walls. Our tour took an hour and Forrester had not said a word. Then he rounded on me explosively to abandon it like that, to leave it empty, just to clear out what will happen to all its art treasures. He was desperately concerned. Houses are important, you know. A house gives security. It is an anchorage. And I think obviously you'll remember that period in 1955 when Hinchingbrook was sold because you grew up there. Well, your childhood that, was spent there. That is a really sad description. It's making me sad right now because I was at boarding school or in London with my mother so much of the time that I think a big historical event like the emptying of a house simply hadn't occurred to me. I mean, we had a new house down in Dorset and all the excitement was forward at that time. And I think, you know, I can only now feel a bit of emotion about that. So John, there's a lot of um, Hinching Brook <laughs> sort of archive material here, but can I just ask what is, you know, growing up there, what was your earliest memory? And did you, did you think it was, if I was growing up there, I would think it was a castle. Did you think growing up that you were living in a castle? Well, I mean, it, it is really a castle now because successive generations keep improving it and making it more comfortable until my father comes and knocks down half of it over here on this wing. But my memory is mostly about the early morning when I was maybe 12, 10 or so. And I used to pick uh, primroses and sell them to the public because the great thing was stand at the gate and <laughs> entice the public, you see. It was quite a business. I have a photograph here of my, my mother sitting at the seat of custom. That was unusual because she was divorced practically by then. <laughs> and myself on the climbing over the, uh -huh. uh, the bar, over the entrance. And we used to collect um, half crowns and two and six and sixpence for children. Right. That's what it was. And these are all your siblings. Kate's there. Yep, Kate's there. Sarah is the tall one. And Anne, yes. another one. So I can see I'm about six or seven now. This but is a of, set of postcards. Right. That were sold at the gate as well. But this is wonderful of the dining room. And this is, is this where you would have your meals? Breakfast, lunch, and oh, dinner? Oh, yes. And there was, there was another photograph of that too. Here we are. Wonderful. Oh. So that, that's, I'm not in this one, but my older sisters, my mother and a school friend, and my father carving at the side table. I mean, that's all very familiar to me. And what was the room in the house, do you, would you say, that you spent m the most time in? Oh, was well, there we were in the nursery upstairs, or the corridor along to the nursery. We weren't particularly wanted on the ground floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I, I can go back and see if the mangle is still there in the room next to the kitchen and the nursery. You know, it won't be. <laughs> right, right. And, and when you were growing up there, do you remember, because, you know, from everything that I've read, uh, doing my master's in country house studies, you know, these houses were well equipped with staff. Did you have uh, quite a lot of staff or not so much? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had 20 before I was born and we were down to about three. <laughs> we had a, a French governess who perhaps didn't count for my two younger sisters. At the pinnacle was uh, George Small, the butler. I've got a photograph of him here, and he, he's doing something very uncharacteristic, which is putting down linen, probably maybe protecting something. Right. But he was my great friend, uh, because he was the only one who would tell me what was happening. So I really did get very close to George Small. And then many, many years afterwards, I was visiting his wife and so on. So How? we had a very small number looking after us, I think. Can I just see that photo really quickly? Because what's wonderful is, of course, it's you know, wonderful to see George here, but I recognize 
this chair and I recognize this painting of um, Martha Ray and I recognize um, uh, this Hogarth painting here. So, you know, the collection as much as possible was then of course taken uh, from Hinchingbrook here at Mapperton. I, in fact, I recognize these wall lights, I'm certain. That we well, they all came, absolutely. We, we took everything we could, but a lot was sold simply because you couldn't get it all into this house. And there were things which my father paid less attention to, which we are now missing. You know, some of the little details, like the fireplace implements and so on. So the house was left vacated in 1955 and then what happened to Hinchingbrook? Well, you know, going back to Mr. Small, the butler, he's probably laying the dust sheets. It's a very sad moment. I wasn't really there half the time, so I don't, I don't remember that. But what was actually happening was that the county council finally agreed to pay because we had a, an American um, religious foundation that came and put up partitions everywhere. And we thought they were going to buy it and then I think he died and everything was derelict. Um, right. The sprinkler system collapsed, you know, the water streaming out of the ceiling. Uh, it was a very catastrophic moment and thank goodness that's persuaded the county council to come up with money. And after some vital restoration work, in 1970, Hinchingbrook became a school, which it remains today. The house survived at a time when so many others were demolished. And for that, we are forever thankful. I'm really looking forward to going back to Hinchingbrook with you. I can't wait, we'll go there together. We're gonna to be, Kate, your sister is going to be joining us. Well, she'll have some memories. They'll be not the same ones. No, they'll not be the same ones. No. But how does that make you feel, you know, going there and, and we're gonna film this together? It's very exciting. I'm really looking forward to it, yes. Yeah. Marvelous. I'm sure it will evoke some other memories as well, so I can't wait to explore those with you. Well, we'll put all this into reality. To really get a sense of what it was like when the family lived there, my father-in-law and I look at some of the old films of Hinchingbrook from the family archives. I haven't watched this in years, yeah. so yeah. it'll be interesting. I saw it once, once upon a time, but I haven't, can't remember it. Here we go. Wonderful. Now, this was taken by my father on the roof of Hinchingbrook. On the roof. That's the famous um, express train to Scotland. <gasps> How wonderful. <gasps> and there oh. is the south side. Beautiful um, there bay is, window. There is the castle. It really is a castle. It has a gatehouse. Look at that fantastic gatehouse. That's become a busy road now, but it was quite slow at that time. <laughs> On the way down to Brampton, where Samuel Pepys lived. Yes. Now look at this extraordinary roof. How is the roof these days? We're not so sure, are we? I don't think the roof is very good. <laughs> now, now that's the park. Lots of familiar sights. There is the courtyard where all the cars were, chauffeur. Oh, goodness, now, now this who is, is this? an event. This is a reenaction of something. That looks like my sister being picked up. That's my grandmother oh, on the left. That's my, your American grandmother, Alberta. The, it you can not see very well, but there, yes, moving in the background. Yes, there my she is. My grandfather. And there's Alberta right there, yes. Fantastic. Extraordinary thing to have this still now. Right. Now, this, now. Is, this is one of my cousins, and those are my two sisters following. <gasps> and are you in the pram? Well, I haven't got a very clear mm. image. That's my Aunt Faith. That's my grandmother over there. American grandmother, <laughs> I always have to say. Yes. Fantastic. Look at Everybody how Everybody getting up for the photo. It's my mother. <gasps> yes. There we are. That's a nice shot of her. Yeah, it really is. And oh, that's goodness. My two sisters again and cousin Drew, his name was. How? And that's, that's your mother. mother. And she had to sit at the gate and collect money from the public. So this is this right here is the in the gatehouse. Is that's that the right? gatehouse exactly ah, where the public came in. Where the public and came that's in. That's grandpa, grandma. Oh, Alberta, yes. With something in her hat, rather cheerful. Now this is my mother. Oh, I'm glad this is this sequence. It's in the rose garden, and um, she's preparing for something. And who is she with? She's with one of the gardeners. I can't right, tell you which right. one. It's before me. 
And wasn't she, can I just, wasn't there something about your mother written that because she wore trousers, she was one of the first sort of aristocratic females to wear trousers at an event, is that no, right? No, but oh. specifically at the Royal Yacht Squadron in Cowes. <laughs> You weren't allowed to wear trousers. And she woman. did. And you, in fact, weren't allowed on the lawn, the main lawn. And did she do that as well? And she did that too. <laughs> well done to your mother. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Well, it's around, can we tell what date that is? End of the 30s. Oh. There's a rose garden, which is now being restored, I think. Yes, it's. I don't think it looks like that, does it? Well, I hope so. <laughs> Not quite. Oh. Well, there's Mum again, getting ready. I didn't know she was good at decoration. And look at that wave now. Now, it may be that I'm in this one. Oh. Yes, that's me oh. and, that's... and my sister Kate, me in a jacket. Uh, I don't know what game this is. It might be croquet. Oh, goodness, that went too fast. Oh, I think we're going to have to find more of that um, footage if we can. Or better yet, we get to go up there. So I've only been to Hinchingbrook twice, but um, I'm looking forward to having a tour around with you and Morrison When we go Kate. next, a few days' time. Yeah, in a few days' um, time. I have a feeling a lot of memories will be flooding back. I'm sure they around. will. You know, I was actually surprised when I was having a conversation with my father-in-law that he didn't have a lot of emotional attachment to Hinchingbrook. I, I actually think I might have more emotional attachment, but that's just the American in me because I, I love history and I, I find that there's a bit of sadness there as well. But I think, you know, this is his home. This has been his home, you know, since he was 12 and he was able to detach from Hinchingbrook, and and I think that's also the way that things were at that time. So many houses were sold and demolished during that period that it was almost normal. So you you had to detach, if you like. I think it'll be interesting to see how John reacts actually when we get to Hinchingbrook and when we go through the rooms and we see the carvings and we see the places where he hid as a young boy and where he played on the lawn and perhaps that will conjure up some more emotion and feelings that perhaps um, might come out then. I do think I will definitely get emotional, but listen, I'm American. I get emotional about most things, but in particular, you know, my last name is technically Hinchingbrook, and this is the house where nine other Countesses of Sandwich and Viscountesses of Hinchingbrook once lived. I'm one of the first to not live in the Montague ancestral home. So for me, it is a little bit emotional, but I also am really looking forward to it as well. Exciting news, everybody, because this video is proudly sponsored by Surfshark, the ultimate solution for online security, especially for travelers like myself. If you're gearing up for your next adventure, this is a message you definitely want to pay attention to. Surfshark, a leading VPN virtual private network, is my trusted companion for ensuring the safety of my online activities and personal information. And as someone who travels frequently abroad and up and down the United Kingdom, I rely on Surfshark every time I connect to the internet. In today's digital age where privacy breaches are rampant, Surfshark guarantees the confidentiality of your online presence and location. Consider those moments when you're connecting to public Wi-Fi networks in cafes, restaurants, or other public spaces. They present a heightened risk. Utilizing a VPN on these networks is essential as it encrypts your data, shielding your information from potential threats. With Surfshark, you can even securely conduct transactions such as accessing your bank accounts on public Wi-Fi networks. Personally, I feel much more secure and protected when I'm online with Surfshark. Its user-friendly interface makes navigation a breeze. Simply download the app onto your device. With the ability to switch to a different IP address in another country, Surfshark not only safeguards you from cyber threats, but also creates the impression that you're in a different location. 
One of its standout features for me is the seamless streaming experience. With just a click, you can virtually explore the globe. For instance, if you're craving access to the extensive Netflix movie catalog while traveling, Surfshark is your solution. And here's a special treat just for you, an exclusive Surfshark deal. Use the promo code Viscountess and follow the link below to enjoy up to three additional months for free. Don't compromise on your online security and freedom. Be sure to check out Surfshark today. Today I am here at Hinchingbrook House and this is why my name is Viscountess Hinchingbrook because of this house. Nine Earls of Sandwich lived here and then it was sold in 1955, but this is really the Montague family seat right here. My father-in-law, John Montague, the 11th Earl of Sandwich, and his five siblings all spent their early childhood here at Hinchingbrook. This is the gatehouse, rebuilt from Ramsey Abbey by the Cromwells. Did you have this car park here? No, well, absolutely no. <laughs> not. There was no car park. Just there were no grass. buildings. There was nothing. It was all trees the whole way through to the, the station, really. Really? Yep. I'll tell you one thing that hasn't changed. The cold. <laughs> the wind. You would come home through this gate sometimes. Yep. And it was just normal. And this would be open all the time. And so you play, you get walk, walk through. Through. Well, no, the, the public came in through the main entrance because we were sitting here. Right. This is so, where we collected the half crown. So when you open to the we public, both of you obviously remember that. And I remember that photograph that you showed me yes. sitting here with sitting your here. mother. And, and you were taking And then tickets. suddenly we'd see a member of the public come and quick rush to here. <laughs> Two and six, please. That was the kind of thing. And I even sold primroses, a bunch of primroses. Uh, there was a rather nice little red booklet we had that we handed out. A yes, little a little orange leaflet. booklet. Yes, leaflet. that's true. And what, yeah. do you remember that as well, just the public coming in? Was yes, it exciting, though? It was, was exciting. It, yes, it yeah. was exciting. Yeah. And we were showing it to others. You know, it, normally it was kept very exclusively for us, but suddenly it was thrown open to everybody, and it was great. And it was great, and it, was, it must have been very exciting. Mm. And here are the 12 apostles, so this, as we called them. What has changed here so much? They've Anything. got much bigger. Oh, these have gotten much They've gotten much bigger. <laughs> they, were, they were much more um, rounded and smaller. Right. We used to play um, around them, right. skipping around them. And, and that's the part of the house that we lived in at the end. Yes. That was the 1950s. And uh, the house was much restored over the years. Um, but I think that was we my bedroom, that third one along. Was it? Mm. Oh. <laughs> and the sitting room remember. was that far end one. So, oh my, well, my room was over the entrance. Should we go in? Yeah, let's go in. Let's go in. It's, it is cool. Let's go in. Just, yes. So this, I just love. You see, you should describe that, really. The three diamonds signifies the mountain reflected in water. Mont Aigu, the sharp mountain, the Norman French word. And the eagles come from the Mont Therma, much earlier connection. It's in the Middle Ages. And the coronet above. And the coronet above. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, gosh, it's warm in here. Hinchingbrook's foundations date as far back as the 12th century, when it was a nunnery. But not until after the dissolution of the monasteries in 1536 did it become a family home. First to the Cromwell family, and then, in 1627, to our family, the Montagues. So here we are. So here we are. So what, what room is this? This is the outer hall, I think we called this, didn't we, John? This is just the, the way into the main hall, mm -hmm. and uh, family portraits around. Well, Some the, the fourth earl is on the left, who is the most well known of the portraits. Yeah. And then the fifth earl was important in the family because he brought the Dorset estate um, at Hook Park in oh Dorset, my West Dorset. So the fifth earl, that's, he's the one who made the connection with Dorset and now 
obviously Matt Britton. Exactly, You're married into the Paulet family. I didn't. I actually didn't know I didn't that. Know that. I, didn't I didn't know that, know that either. I've always wondered. I knew that somebody in the family that yeah. there was a connection with Dorset because there was land down there, but I didn't know that it was the fifth, the fifth Earl. So right. um, that all took place in the mid 18th century, and then the lawyers argued for a hundred years, and the family didn't get the property till about 1860. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So coming in here, so this says Inner Hall, but is that what you called it? I remember it as a concert hall, funnily enough, because we used yes, to have concerts. Yes, there was a huge grand piano. The grand piano, piano was, was there. The grand piano was yes, there? Yes, over there. On, on a raised stage. platform. And, so. that's how, and what else was in here? Well, Furniture? I mean, or only, just not only much, events. no. 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 It, it was really for events, wasn't it? it Everybody was. we... walked through the hall and nobody stopped. <laughs> yes, it was particularly good at Christmas. Oh, exactly. Because we had a huge Christmas tree, to, not to the ceiling, but sort of well up. Right, uh, well, in, the, in corner the corner there. Right all here. All decorated with, with uh, proper candles. That <gasps> was quite frightening. Proper live candles that had to be lit. When I'm in this room, I obviously my eyes focus in on the lozenges, which you've explained, the reflecting mountains, and, but there's just a lot of coat of arms here. Well, of course, that is the full-size coat of arms with Neptune on the left, the eagle on the right, and the family motto, post tot naufragia portum, after so many shipwrecks, we reach the harbour. Yes. And that, of course, goes very well with the life and death of the first Earl, Edward Montague. Yeah, no, no. Because he died in that sea battle. He died in that sea battle. Can you do what my father used to be able to do and describe it in heraldic terms? No. No. No, I can't. <laughs> With something about beaked and membered ghouls. Well, you, you did actually study heraldry for a bit. I did oh. for a little bit. Now, where should we go next? Well, you there tell were, me. There are, it's going there, to the, what's it called, the big, the big drawing, drawing room? room. The big drawing room. I think we must peep in the, there. All right, then, let's peep in the big drawing room. Then we've got a lot of memories down that corridor, haven't we? Yep. Oh. Okay, let's peep in there. Hiding. Yes, the, the, the hiding places. Hardly went into this room. Well, um, we weren't allowed. Children were not allowed in the big no, room. No, because of the lovely furniture and things. We weren't really allowed in here. So you weren't, so this, but the public was allowed in here. You were. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes, this was open, certainly. Is that the eighth Earl? That is the one who was unmarried, my great uncle. Right, and then he, because he was unmarried, he then, uh, it went to George, who was the ninth Earl. That's and right. who grandpa, was his that was Grandpa. Grandpa, who was Edward's nephew. And this, I'm certain, is Alberta. Oh, do you think? That's yeah. interesting. I've not so, seen... Yes, because when I've seen her in, you know, I'm doing my master's mm, I do. on Alberta. It has to be Alberta because when you look at some of the footage of Hinchingbrook that John and I just watched. And early you, photographs. Have you and watched? early photographs, yeah. you can see that, that right. it is. And you can see bits of auburn in her hair. I was just looking for that. that. I was coming from this angle. You can see the auburn hair. You can see the auburn hair. But it's only very light touch. Yeah. So you weren't, you were too young to come to... This, this room. Of, this room. And, and the room there, yes. So you really didn't live in this part of the house? No. This, because it was open to the public, is that right? Mm. Well, it was out, only of, out of bounds unless there was something happening which affected us directly. Right. But we weren't, weren't normally down here. But we were allowed further down, so when we go through, we'll see. We might just glimpse at one or two of hiding places. Rooms. Okay, okay, mm. of hiding places. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, you lead the way. Say. It's your house. <laughs> As was the custom in country houses like Hinchingbrook, the children of the family spent much of their time away from the rooms where the parents would entertain. Exploring the house with John and Kate is such a privilege for me, and even they are finding some surprises here. This is, this is a this new was, discovery. This is the billiard room, and this right. is the chapter but it's house. opened up because they found this amazing chapter house of the old Ah, Norman Church. Of the old Norman Church. Mm. Oh, how see signs of that So when you were growing up, we didn't this, see this you didn't all. see this at all? No, this was a wall. No, this has been found. This has been found. But what I also particularly like is, you know, the carvings here. Mm. I just feel like every room I walk into, some Earl of Sandwich <laughs> was there. I thought there was a hiding place, Kato. Where is it? 
What are you looking for, John? Well, the I think place. it's been taken away. No, there was no door, that, no extra used door to hide there. Between one no, 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 it's further oh, it's on. It's further on, yeah. Yep. Oh, well, what's this? Is this a hiding place? That's <gasps> no, that's a hiding place. Did you hide in there? I bet you did. No, well, we might have done, but it's rather murky and, and cobwebby and frightening. I don't think I'd have gone in there. Oh, I, th I think you'd But you the, the actual hidey one is in the billiard room. Do you want to see yeah, that? Yeah, I do want to see that. Okay. This is where I had my electric trains. He had his electric trains in here, and they used to give me shocks. So I used to come here a lot. He would, he would say, just put your finger there. <laughs> Lick your finger and put it there. <laughs> Lick your finger and... John, do you remember doing that to your sister? Okay, so this Shut was... Well. This, okay. this has been changed. This was a double door. This was a double door. Oh, it was so far down here. Yeah. Oh. This was a double door. I see him, so that's and the so library. And so that's now the library door. And but so we it, used to hide in yeah, here. Yeah, we'd hide in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Was the whole house involved in hide and seek, or was it just particular rooms? Um, I think it was particular rooms. rooms it would right. be the library and in here and probably the halls and around in this bit, but not probably in the big rooms that had the lovely furniture in because right. they would be frightened of us <laughs> breaking, breaking something. something. You know, when you look at these rooms, does it all kind of come flooding back? It certainly and, does. Yeah. Mm, it does. But it's wonderful to see what the school has found, you know, something like that arch of the old chapter house. Huge improvements. No, 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 absolutely. discoveries. Architectural references to the time when the nuns lived here at Hinchingbrook weren't the only discoveries. Ooh, this door. Spooky, squeepy, creepy. So what is this? What are we looking at here? This, this is a hiding is place. The this nuns is bones. the nuns' bones. When my father put in the new staircase, 1953, I was 10 years old, Kate was eight years old. We had this absolutely terrifying prospect of the bones of two Mount Nuns being discovered again through the, just the excavations by the text. But oh, Julie, you need to, you need to pick up that okay. panel. Yes, okay. you can pick up that okay. panel. So Turns out that they weren't exactly Nuns' bones. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You see how it's very frightening for children. It was quite I frightening. <laughs> So we used to be terrifying each other. We, we, we and would, and the others, would, and, and, and the others. Oh my goodness. But it turns out that there are a man and a woman from an earlier period even than the, the priory. So we haven't any so idea. So they're not nuns. And they're not actually nuns. Probably but, not nuns. Probably. But it was a good story. It was a good we, story. We said nuns bad. And dad was good at making things a bit frightening. And it became so a, a feature of the house for mm. the public mm. oh, forever public. after. Mm. Yeah. But did you really hide in there? Wouldn't it be too scary? No, not too much, too many times. <laughs> <laughs> One of the rooms which the children were allowed into was the dining room. What I would like to know is, we're here eating our lunch, and in this grand dining room. Oh yes, well we've got <laughs> memories of the dining room. So tell room. me about the memories. Do you want there to was a dinner? long table down the middle and those Cromwellian chairs that I think are at Mapleton. Yes. They're rather painful to sit in, yes. upright leather chairs. <laughs> um, we have those. Was it formal or was it, it certainly wasn't like this. It's it very formal. Very formal. So describe that to me, like what do you remember? uncomfortable formal at work. Well, we ought to mention Mr. Small, George Small, the head of the household. He was, he was the butler mm. and everything that had to be done was organised by Small, or oh, Mr. Small. Right. Mrs. Small and he became a great kitchen, friend of ours, Mrs. didn't he? He did. He used to look after our interests. He but, did. But of course he was serving on the side tables. There was a big screen over by the door Right. which blocked off the, the table where the food came into. And then he would, it would all be brought in and laid out on the table there, and then he would do the serving. Or, well, he would hand the things around right. for us to take from. For well, to take from. For, for the others, yeah. so I don't remember. I would have had my plate made for me, I think. There was a children's end, I think, of the table. So we, didn't, we weren't interspersed with the grown-ups. I think we had our, our end, mm. and therefore we could talk ourselves uh, right. uh, uh, about what we wanted to talk about and mm. not have to have, make polite conversation to the grown-ups. And what was dress like? When you came and ate here, 
What were you? You'd have to dress up. No trousers for girls. No trousers um, for girls, right. So skirt or a dress with a sash and a bow. And you a remember fiddle. you and I? Oh my goodness. You and I were looking at a photograph. Mm. But that, that was my two older sisters. Yes. And a friend of theirs sitting at the table, but a bit formally. It was a bit alarming to come in here. Yeah. When the grown-ups all down on sitting at the table. There might, there might be 16 people sitting at this long table that we had. Right. I didn't eat much at the dining room table in here because I think I was too young. You probably did. Well, it was called, you know, when you're grown up, sort of. When, when yes, you're it was, eight. there was a sort of a bit <laughs> of a division. Yes, and I do remember meals, but I also remember events as such as my birthday. Do you? Uh, there was a birthday party here, and I was given a bicycle which was wheeled towards me across there. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think I, I, my dog, you don't remember uh, that Friday. Labrador, black rab I Labrador do. called Friday. Well, he was produced in here as well. Oh, well, this is a, a happy present. room for you. So it is a happy room. And I also had to um, play the part of the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. Um, I'd, I'd broken my arm, it was in a plaster, mm. and I had to run across from a screen there to a screen there. <laughs> and that was my whole part. <laughs> Your whole part, <laughs> with a broken arm. How many rooms would you say, a hundred? No, no. No, I wouldn't have said a hundred. More like sixty, do you think? So what did maximum. we say? We said twenty bedrooms, didn't we? Yeah. I think fifty maximum. To listen to John and Kate reminisce is simply amazing, and it's really affecting. From the moment we arrived, it brings Hinchingbrook to life for me. You know, I, w I will forever look at this gateway completely differently in, in the sense, seeing John and Kate sitting there on the bench and showing where they sat and then where the visitors came in and asking for money what was it two and six please two and six shillings and just hearing that story that they did really try to save Hinchingbrook and when I say save I mean save it for the family of course it's been saved it hasn't been demolished it's still here but to keep it in the family and I think I'll just remember that gatehouse as really a representation of how the country house not just Hinchingbrook has really struggled over the past century, but in particular, you know, since the Second World War in particular, that was the final blow. If you look at the Second World War, it was kind of the final, final blow and how all these families had to work incredibly hard. And when I say all of the families, the children included, to try to keep these houses in the family and so many of them couldn't. So they were demolished or they were left in ruin or they became hospitals or hotels or even schools. But I always think the ones that did survive and they became the hotels, the schools, the hospitals, um, at least they're still here. The fabric of the building is still here. And so are the stories, just other stories are being told. Living here as young children in the late 1940s and early 1950s, John, Kate, and their siblings spent much of their time in the nursery wing of the house. So here we are, this is top floor, and which way is the nursery? Right, kiddo. The we... nursery is no, to the... No, no. Oh. Oh, we're going to have a disagreement. Depends which way you want to well, go. This is the it's actually there. It's <laughs> behind us, you see, so we could go there. either way. <laughs> oh, your old room. My old room. Wow, look at wow. this. <clears throat> Lovely room. How well do you remember this? I, I'm not sure I have very many memories of this. Well, what I chiefly remember is this double door led to my mother's mother's bedroom, my grandmother on. So this side. door here led to your... And there was a secret mother's place mother's between there was a, a double, of these another hiding, double door. hiding places. But I also remember the ceiling was a sort of blue firmament with stars. It was a, most, a rather wonderful ceiling. And then did you have a fire, John? This has obviously been Well, I can't up. remember the fire, but I do remember my mother's bedroom was 
right there, so it was a very good position to be in. If you were in trouble, you ran in there. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't quite so close, were you? No, I was miles away. <laughs> Special boy again. Special boy. <laughs> Special boy again. <laughs> Number one son. <laughs> But do you remember coming into John's room sometimes, occasionally? Not this one. I remember no. the other one, the measles one. What's I the don't remember this one. Where's the measles one? Well, it's down the passage. It's the second room. We're on the way down to the oh. nursery anyway, aren't we? Okay. What's the Let's measles one? Well, I'll show you. Go okay. On. Keep going. Oh, my goodness. Wait. Kate, just hold on before we go see the measles room. Yes. Or whatever that is. What, yeah, yes. This room. I've just spotted it. This is my mother's bedroom. Really important room for us. Oh. Um, she had the bed here up against her, yeah. and I think there was a fireplace there. Right. And <gasps> this lovely little balcony going to the to the on, overlooking a garden. Beautiful. And the, the in the behind there is, is um, her bathroom. And was this where her dressing? Yes, dressing table, table would have been there. there. Yes, <gasps> absolutely. And so, do you you re you remember this? Absolutely. I remember this because on Christmas morning we opened our stockings in here. <gasps> Um, on her on bed. On her bed there. Yes, absolutely. She had a big, lovely bed. And this one, this room was her bathroom. Oh. Um, attached, I suppose, <gasps> done up for her to have a bathroom. Yes. Um, How wonderful. It's, I mean, it is, it's wonderful. And look at her it views. It is. Yeah. Her views are, are the best. And I mean, did she go really out are. on the balcony? Um, yes, I think she would have done. Yes. Yeah. And she probably had a little chair there and she could yeah. sit in the sun. <gasps> It's mm, beautiful. This room was always a very happy room. It, it always smelt deliciously <gasps> off of my mother, and it um, was always just had gave off this great vibe of, of happiness. Oh. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, it's do you beautiful. feel that you can feel? I can, I can feel it now. Yeah. It, it just yeah. has a feel about it. Right. Mm. It's nice. Yeah, really wonderful. Wonderful. We've got another room to see down here, which was my old room. Well, we've just seen your old room. Is this another I know, room? No, but this is older. Oh, this is the one that's turned into a loo. <laughs> that's very funny. Is this a bit different from how you remember it? You got to laugh at this one. John's bedroom is now a loo. Overlooking it, I think that. <laughs> That I think I'm allowed to come in because it's a female loo, so I, I'll go in. Oh with, my goodness! So what I remember about it is there was a terrible piece of wire right? instead of a light. The light was, seemed to be never attached. So I had this memory, Kate remembers this, of, of a joke of saying a piece of wire, and I made fun of it, but actually I was rather afraid of it as to what was going to happen. You were really shut in here for three weeks, I think, when you had measles. Uh, oh, of course I had measles, yeah. Oh my goodness, three... Do you remember that, John, being in dark, here? Dark, dark, three weeks. I do now, yes, I had forgotten Three about weeks it. in here in dark. Mm. Well, there's, there is a lot of light compared to the other rooms. You can yes, see. yes, yes but that would have been curtained. He wouldn't right, have allowed, right, been allowed right. a light. <gasps> and so now that's it's, all I can remember, Because it was something to do with blindness, I think, with measles. Um, yes. That was the thinking. That, that was the stage. thinking back then. So mm. this was mm. your room. With each room we visit, the feelings become more intense, the memories more vivid, of how Hinchingbrook was once their family home. And that was the way out to the roof. Ah. ah. That was the way out to the roof. And would you go out there? Mm. Oh, you would, mm. you naughty mm. little girl, mm. <laughs> when you went out there. Oh my goodness, but you went out here. Oh mm. yes, we did supervise. So this we area here. No, it was not supervised. You could just one Yes, you jolly could. <laughs> Kate clearly did. I did, <laughs> loved it. You must so have been the, much braver. So this is the nursery area here, no. We haven't but quite this, got to it. No, this, this, is, this is the laundry room. I don't remember it. But it had the mangle. Oh, the mango. The great mango. What's a mango? And then the, a mango? 
Yeah. Oh my goodness, you can't not know what a no, mangle is. I don't know is. what a mangle is. You've probably got a different American term for probably. it. Probably. Uh, it's a, a couple of, of bars, of, ro of like, rather like rolling pins. Right. And then a handle, and then you'd put your clothes or when you washed them through the mangle, oh, yes. and then it would drain the water, water out. Water. Okay. And then you could hang them up. Okay. We probably just called it a dryer. No, you couldn't <laughs> possibly have called it a dryer. Oh, look, okay, no, this is it. <gasps> Huge so this room. is the nursery. I can see why. I can absolutely... It's dark, John, isn't it? See why I this is the nursery. I suppose we're on the north side of the house. But you could lean out and you could see exactly who was arriving. And you could see who was yeah. arriving. Yeah. See. So, but a nursery was just where you would... Okay, a nursery a was where... A playroom. A playroom. But it was, it was um, where we ate as well. And we'd do lessons in here. I'd have lessons. I had... Um, there was a table in the window where there I did my first lessons. There was certainly a table in lessons. this window, wasn't there? The strongest, earliest memory I have of this room is the telephone ringing. And the telephone was high up on the cupboard, so we couldn't reach it ourselves. It was kept away from us. Telephone ringing, Julia is born. 1947, this was our younger sister. Right. And I, that's absolutely crystal clear. I was only four. Mm, but you remember the phone ringing. I don't know. And the news coming through. That Julia was yeah. born. One other thing is my mother's studio, because she was a painter. Her room next door, which we ought to look in quickly. Okay. Because yep. that's where yep. we also spent some, some moments, anyway. Not right, long. So let's go check out. The, the studio. And do you remember seeing your mother paint? Yes. Yeah. Oh yes, certainly. Yeah. Canvases everywhere and, and, <gasps> and oil, lovely smell of oil paint. This is the one. Yeah. There's so many bedrooms or rooms. So I should all say. I can remember is canvases. What can you remember here, Kedda? Well, again, I remember pictures and easels and paint everywhere and um, just, just a room which we didn't really come into very much because it was very much Mum's area, right? And area. she didn't really like us to be. Yeah, but in a lovely room. Too much. Yes. Well, lovely light. I can see why. Lovely she, light. She would want this mm. to, to. But so this, where we are now in the house, because I've been, you know, the nursery area. Is this really where you felt that you lived? I mean, you slept mm. here, yes. but exactly. Yeah. Right. Yes, definitely. Down we this were passage. all pretty well in this passage. Right. Either just down the bottom there, or where we were earlier. Or round to our or, parents' or, rooms. Yeah. Was the other. Right. Mm. So it was just this yeah. part. Mm. Yeah. No, well, it's so much. fast. Uh, but we, were, we just had a separate life up here. I used to like getting up very early in the morning and just walking around the exterior of the house and saying hello to one or two of the, the carpenter or the chauffeur, you know. And that, that I do remember clearly. So it might have been because it was busy in the house all the time. but Yes, no, no, of course. But there was somebody always here that when you would walk around, you would see the carpenter see, or the see, chauffeur. Yes, or... yes. I mean, there were lots mm. of people around. It was very warm. I mean, in some ways, they were more friends to us than our parents and the people who came to stay in the house. You'd go into the kitchen garden and the, the gardeners didn't tell you to go away and do something <laughs> else. They would say, come and have a peach or... Um, or, you know, they, they, everybody was really lovely. Having both of you here, I just can see how close you are, not only in age, but, you know. We are. You, you're very, you've, I mean, I've known this you're not, you've, you've my known whole that. life. Well, mm. not my whole life, but since I married into the family, I know you're both close. But now for me to be able to just listen to the two of you together, mm. to reminisce and tell stories. And I, th I, it's wonderful. Well, it's lovely for us, actually, because there's lots of things we might not have ever thought about again. So what was in here, John, this room? Do you remember? Oh yes, this, is, this was our main guest room. This was a guest room? This was our guest this, this was, was the, a corridor. There was a corridor down there the side. There was a corridor. Right. And, made, then, and, then, and then it was bedrooms. divided. It was divided. That was oh. the main bed, the guest room there. Okay. How lovely that window is with its uh, gothic tracery yes. at the top there. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. But you know, here. The bow window. I remember taking um, trays from the butler's pantry, our uh, butler's pantry, and sliding down the banks when it was snow. <laughs> oh yes, that I do remember. remember. that? Oh 50, yes, remember that. 53, two, on there trays. was a very, very cold spell at one stage. Right, and you took the trays. And we, yeah, well we asked him of course. Right, right, right. Just yeah. to take them. <laughs> but we had a, a tin, because we had tin trays, those great mm. big tin trays. Perfect for sitting on. 
drink. Perfect. Mm. How fun. Mm, I remember very clearly, just at the end there. Oh yes, there the goes terrace. the train. That evokes mm. the, the film we just watched of Hinchingbrook. But this, what do we know about this? Do you remember this? We've never seen that in our time. It's been done much more recently and it's part of the old Norman church. Ah, we it did was see the Lancet window, but this is a bigger one. <gasps> it's beautiful. It's part of the old Norman church. So it was discovered after. Another example of how the school has been looking after the mm. building. Yes, absolutely. The fabric of the building and uncovering and making these extraordinary discoveries. Well, this was this. Did you see the name of this room? Is the Montague room? Oh, very yeah. good. I think it's rightfully so. It's the, probably the grandest room in upstairs. So it's nice that I like that Montague room, the grandest room on the first floor. And on the upper floor of the house, Kate and I find her father's rooms, now classrooms. Well, Dad's room was down <gasps> the end there. Oh, my goodness. So right. his room was at the end there with his bathroom just off it. And these two rooms, I don't know what they were. Well, maybe they were just bedrooms. almost like his, but no, maybe they were just his lounge rooms. But let's just have, like, have a quick Let's look. have a look. This is really fun. It's like exploring and you have to really use your imagination. Oh my, the school has 2,000 people, Kate, and Does you can it? use your imagination. But this and is this the is sixth form. With Kate and John, it's so fun. This is the sixth form though, you see? Yes. Okay, so this was dad's bedroom. <gasps> and he had oh a my little, goodness. he had a little pre-dieu. Do you know what a pre-dieu is? No. In the corner here, and where you kneel to say your prayers. Oh. And his bed was there. And his bed was there, and look at this. Yeah. I mean, that's original, yes. Yeah, he must have loved this room, I think. <gasps> but where was his, his bathroom, bathroom then? His here. And I used yes, to watch him shaving. Is. One of those, he had a strop, stropping razor. Right. I used to watch him. And you must have, let's open up that door, shall we? Just opening up lots of doors. I mean, how many doors do you think? Oh, yeah. it's locked. It's an office. An office. The loo is now an office. <laughs> It's so fun it's to go through so nice this with like you this, and your memory, Kate. Yeah, it's not bad, my memory. No, is it? <laughs> no it's, it's not. No, not bad. Look at this. Oh, you see that? Oh, gosh. So that's the rose garden there. Yes. And there's a little walkway that goes there. And then there's a new building there. The cedars are amazing because there's the cedar there. There's a cedar out there. There was a cedar here that we climbed all the time. You know, I'm going to get emotional here because I think seeing John and Kate walk around together with their memories really s struck home to me because I was able to experience that. And for that, I'm so incredibly grateful and lucky that I was there to hear their stories and to see them laugh. That's important. And I think Hinging Brook for me represents that those stories that can continue to be told, not only through you know, my father-in-law and, and through Kate, but I can then, of course, tell the story of filming here with them and be able to tell that to my children that, do you know that I was once with grandpa and your grandpa or your great-grandfather and we went through his house that he used to live in and he told these amazing stories. And so I think, Hinchingbrook and the Montague family can still live on and survive together and tell those stories. Um, we just have to, have to keep coming back and I think we have to be able to make sure that this, that this building survives. So I think that's my attachment to it. It's not just that 350 years of Montagues lived here. I think for me it was it was the experience of seeing my father-in-law and, uh, and telling his stories so I can then tell that experience to my grandchildren. And that's how history lives on. Sorry. I didn't realize how vast 
Hinchingbrook house was. There were kind of two houses within the house itself. So there was the grand part of the house, if you like, where the drawing room was, the library, the billiards room. And then there was the other side of the house where John and Kate lived. And it seemed much more, I, th I guess, warm and friendly. And I, under I could kind of understand why they really stuck to, to that part of the house. Um, it seemed more like a home. Hinchingbrook House is a symphony of architectural styles. From its medieval origins to the time the Montague family lived here, each generation has altered the building to suit its needs. And most recently, Hinchingbrook has adapted to become a school. But by spending time with John and Kate, it's not so difficult to imagine it as their childhood home. Look at this kitchen. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what you remember about this. So in here, there was a great big table in the middle here. Right. Where Mrs. Small would stand. She was your here, cook, here, Mrs. Small. And then she could be against, she could be on the table, or she could be, and this was one long black stove. <gasps> that, um, Lovely. I, I don't know whether there's baker's ovens and things. Um, Look at those, Kato. Remember those? Oh, that's a spit that's up a there. Spit. Yeah. They was it, you remember that? You yeah, that. but it, it's been put up there. I think it was working. It would have been in the, in the fireplace. I think fireplace. it was working. Right. But there was absolute movement everywhere. So this was, this was busy in here, very busy. So and the you scullery, had, the scullery was around was the corner. There. I love the scullery. But you had breakfast, lunch and dinner made for you by... Yes, but that came up in the lift to our floor, to the nursery floor. So, but did you ever come in here and try to get food? Or? Yes, I was forever. Look, this was one of the interesting things that, about the children in the house. You, you could not just assume that you could walk through places where people were working. So if she was doing her kitchen work, no, out rolling out pastry, it was out of bounds unless you poked your head around the door and she said, yes, you can come in. Yeah. So there was permission all the time for right. the children of the house. Of the children of the house, mm. even though mm. it's your even house. Even though it's your house, exactly. <laughs> permission at every turn. And what was mm. she like? Did she give oh, you? Oh, she was a lovely, oh, she... lovely, lovely person. Yes, she did. Slipped us You're bits of pastry. About Mrs. Small. Mrs. Small. Oh, wonderful person. Wonderful. Yeah. So she would slip you bits of pastry and yes, and, <gasps> and, and and show you how to do it and make allow you to roll it out and all of that. Oh, hmm. perhaps not you. Perhaps it was because I was a girl. No, no it wasn't me. <laughs> that was the way through to the okay, wait. the nunnery we called it. All right, so we're going through here. So this we'll is the scullery. Okay, it's so British. The scullery. This is what I love. You have these names, the larder, the scullery. What else yes. is there? Well, that was about, about it. it. Right. Pantry. <laughs> Pantry. There you go. <laughs> but all had different purposes. You know, they were all different. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what was the purpose of the scullery? Remind me again. Oh, peeling vegetables. Washing things up. Like that. Washing up. up. Washing up. That's right. So this was the scullery here. And do you remember this back staircase? Was no, I don't think that was there, but I may be wrong. Kate and I climbed the stairs to part of the house known as the nunnery. It was here, when their parents separated, that Kate, John, and their siblings lived. So when this transition happened and you moved to this part of the house, you know, did you, I mean, did you still have friends over and, and... Friends so is always an interesting one. Friends is a tricky one because we, we lived in the big house and we right. didn't have very many friends um, locally. Well, we did, but, but right. they were rarefied, like Prince Richard and Prince William of Gloucester, who <laughs> used to come every now and again for tea parties. <laughs> this is unbelievable. And, and, and also, but, but it wasn't the thing for us to just mix with everybody. Although, all the, the children that worked on the estate were our great friends. Were your great so friends those great. were our friends, really. Right, right. But no, I don't remember lots of children coming into right. this part of the house. Right. I don't remember lots of children, other children, being in the house at all. So this, we're now entering the nunnery. This numbering. is very strange indeed, because this was a completely different in fact, of the school buildings, this is the least recognisable. Because every window here, through, yes. had a, be a bedroom. So there would have been a bedroom there and a bedroom there. And as we go on through, oh the same goodness. thing happens again. Look at this great open plan area. It's lovely. Beautiful so place these, to work. So there were walls um, There here. were walls. 
Yep, absolutely. Ah. They were all little rooms except for the end room, which was the big sitting room, which went across the whole of the width of the building. Okay. And then there was a passage way, the whole way up here. And in fact, it was rather good because you could run all the way along and it, there was a bit which went over something below but it was a sort of little bit of a, a and you could jump over it like a bridge so you, it would go da 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 to the end to the end running up and down the passage uh, no it was it was some oh my goodness yeah. so, so this... it was all passage this bit where we're standing yeah. so i'm envisioning this bedroom there bedroom there bedroom there that's mm. five bedrooms yep. and a corridor along here that's right that's and right. then what leads and into my that... mother lived at the uh, in the end bedroom so she's moved from that room I just saw, which was lovely with a spectacular balcony, mm. to sort of here, low ceilings mm. Mm. and right. Yes, but she wasn't here all the time because no. she was in London and we had the governess and the people looking after us, a nanny and a nanny. Right. So mum wasn't really featuring much except for weekends she'd come down. She'd come down weekends. Because mm. she was doing art, she was painting. So you literally lived five bedrooms across here sitting room here mm. yeah you make it sound as if it was an odd thing but for us There's it wasn't no. odd at all it was just completely uh well what we'd been told was going to happen, happen. so you yeah. just do you what just happens. know that that's mm. what children mm. that's what children do yes i mm -hmm. i think it's quite cozy oh, it's, <laughs> yes it's quite cozy it's a nice warm temperature no, <laughs> it, no it was cozy compared. yeah you know the rooms are all very little compared to the big rooms we right. had in the other house right and it's very yeah. cozy yeah no, it does. It's nice. It's nice. It's yeah. Good. No, it is. Well, it's I think the we were happy here. That's good. Yeah. Even though it was blowing a gale outside, we ventured out to see where the late 19th century west wing of the house once stood, and it's here where Kate and John played as children. This is where Woo! we got onto stilts once upon a time, Kate Did you? and I. You and we went up and down on stilts, <laughs> didn't we? And then, do you remember, there were big red pots on here. Big, big red pots. Right. And in them, you knew when summer was coming because the wallflowers were exchanged for geraniums. Ah. Oh, what a, what a now, can I ask a question? The wing that was demolished, yes, was John that coming this. out here? It was, yes, there were arches all the way down here. Yes. Ah. All the way down. But John, did it come off the end of this? Yes, it was on connected with that. Whoa, it's going to blow, it's going to rain now. Oh, steady! Julie, there should, be a, there should be a cedar tree. Yes, John, there's a stump. Is it there? There's a rump. Look, <laughs> there's a rump of a cedar tree. Look. Oh, God. Oh! Is it there? Yeah. God, we're going to get there. It's a rump. And you used to climb there. Yes, we God. did. Oh. I don't think I can work out any footholds there. Can you, John? <laughs> right, we've had it. Come Better on. Better not. When the sun returned, we tried again. Clear. This is lovely. Clear. This is fantastic. Really yes, good. look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Beautiful. I remember the bicycle on here too, going up and down these paving stones. Can you remember the unevenness of the paving stones? I can. Roller skates and we were was on the same. Stilts. Playing with stilts. Playing with stilts. It's lovely. And then this was all previously covered by arches and the offices I think they were bedrooms at that right. time by the Edwardians and my father pulled down the, the wing. Pulled yes, down so the and wing. I have that photo of before the wing was pulled down. This would, would have been service rooms, staff rooms previously. Staff uh, rooms. Staff rooms. And then okay. we lost all the okay. staff too. What do you remember of here running around playing you know, kitchen garden, all of that. Because I have this lovely photo of your mother and she's in trousers and she's in the rose garden with somebody and she's got a lovely basket. Yeah. And, and it's well, also in the all film. In, all in the rose garden, which was just over there, through there. Right. Um, I remember my father weeding the creeper. There was a creepers all the way along there, sort of um, wisteria and things like that. A lot of that. pruning, lot of pruning oh, yeah, along so there. Quite yeah. good at pruning. <laughs> right. Yeah. A lot of pruning. A lot of pruning. And what about this door? Did you ever... Yes, we can't use that, that was door. the flower room. The flower Mom, room? Yeah. flower room, yes. You had a flower room. Well, she kept, you know, if you went around and picked flowers in the garden, 
Right. She'd take them into there <gasps> and then put them in vases to put on in the guests' rooms. Yes. Room. We'll all, we'll link all hold on. Link on. Oh, no, we did have skirt. sometimes. We there had was a tea. little table. Yes, we had a little table and chairs there. This should be in nice this place little to spot. Stand, and there should be a door um, there somewhere. Let's just stand. Yes. Yes. Should we stand these in here? The, these are the wheels from the mill. Oh, these Brampton, are the what? The mill wheels. <gasps> oh, the mill wheels from well, Brampton, Brampton Mill. Oh, Brampton. Brampton Mill. <gasps> Wonderful. That was a good idea, wasn't it? This is I very quiet. I remember that yeah, being this made. This is much better here. This is a nice place to be. Oh, look at these irises. Aren't they beautiful? And this was the church, the little chapel. The chapel. Where we, we on Sundays, we had prayers. <gasps> so there was a table and chairs so we could sit out sometimes. So you could sit outside. And family photographs were here. This yes, is a good you, place you'll, for you'll, you'll, you'll see. It's Did. obviously a nice protective yeah. bit. <laughs> it certainly is. Those irises are smart, aren't they? Yeah, very smart. Lovely. And then this right here, obviously we're coming up to the library. Yes, this is the, this is the bow window. window. Beautiful. Yep. But that's obviously Queen Elizabeth I. Yes, Kate, oh, yes the cipher that. at the top there. It was 1564, but that says 1602. That's when it was put up, obviously. That's when it was put up. Yeah. Oh. But this wasn't always the position of this great commemorative bow window. After a fire in 1830, the east front of the building was dramatically changed and the window relocated to where we see it now. You see how it was completely rebuilt, you see, where the bow window was. So you can't tell where it would have fit no. in. No. Yeah. So that's where it was, I it's see. Right. There's so much architectural history to be discovered at Hinchingbrook. And later on, I meet up with Tom Wheely, one of the history teachers here, who explains how parts of the building have evolved from their medieval beginnings to what we see today. There's one room at Hinchingbrook which still bears some resemblance to the time when John and Kate lived here as children. Oh, this is exciting, coming back into the oh, yes. library. With that beautiful glass. Gosh, I remember this room was really not coming in here very much. I mean, you all no, have a different a feeling. Room, grown it's up a grown-up room. room. And people playing cards is what I remember. Well, as it is now, I mean, it was generally a very quiet room and you could come in mm. and work here. Mm. And there were some wonderful bound volumes. Yes, beautiful books, always. Do you remember that on either side of these steps there were uh, there were bushes. I can't remember no, what the name of it is. You don't remember that? No. Yes. No, you see, I remember things like the trees really here, because didn't Sarah and Anne have a favourite tree? That it wasn't the cedar tree, I was told. It was a beech tree the that beech was tree called, called Cubbins. Cubbins. Yes, we Cubbins. Cubbins. But, but I don't see a beech tree no, that could gone, be I Cubbins. Think, Is it I gone think, completely? Well, it might be just behind that one. But the I can't trees tell. in this garden are quite, you, you know, as children, we knew about the cedar we tree. We ran that was a lot up and lot. down here, didn't we? We did, yeah. Lots of stories. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And the, and the daffodils that I see are still down there. Are they still out? Uh, yeah, well, just. Do you remember the old family film that was taken from the roof? It was looking out over the railway. That was yes, I over do remember in that, that direction. Yes, I've, well, I've seen it over the years. That was taken by my father and then by Sarah as well. I think it was Ooh, look. There you are. Oh, look. Oh, Julie. Oh, Julie, how good. kind. No, <laughs> very well. <laughs> the least I could do. Special Come biscuits. Into your family home. Where I think are you that's, that's John's. That's John's, yeah. So th for me, this room, the library, you know, and listen, I know I'm coming at it from my American point of wow factor, but this really is a wow factor type of room. I mean, it's just Montague everywhere in this room. Mm -hmm. what, are your, what are your recollections of this room? Because it was a library when you were growing up, is that right? We yes, were just trying to remember. Because it again, one it's one of the, we, yeah, weren't we, weren't, we didn't come in much. You, you thought games and things, but I oh, don't I remember. Definitely and remember. people sitting around and chatting and being in here. It was used as a sort of secondary. After dinner kind of yes, room so. with cards played. Mm. The library, one of the most impressive rooms at Hinchingbrook. The walls are lined with books, but it's the amazing stained glass windows, which really seize your attention. So Kate, since your heraldry, Kate is an expert on heraldry. Oh, uh, she's not an expert yes, on heraldry. she yes. is. So now is, this, this is, is the perfect moment. room. This is yeah. your moment. 
this is your perfect room. And really, honestly, I don't understand. Obviously, I understand the Montague coat of arms, but when we look at these stained glass and you can see the lozenges on one side and then another family partial coat of arms, what does that mean? There's Because these throughout these stained glass, it's not just the Montague coat of arms, it's sort no. of split. Well, when you married, you brought in the coat of arms of the wife or the wife's family. So you, it would be divided. So because back then you would always marry somebody, well, most likely somebody who had a title or comes from a, a yeah, aristocratic family. Is that right? I, I suppose that would be right. Yes, yes. The Montagues were always trying to draw attention to their grandeur. That's the basic thing about these whole windows. I mean, you wouldn't otherwise see that no, no, in any course. other generation, I don't think. When you found out that it was being sold, did, you, did that conjure up any emotion of sadness or were you attached to the place or, yeah. Not in my case. <laughs> oh, he's not right. He yeah. minded hugely. Well, we were all at school, you see, us older ones. You've minded hugely over the years that it's not been here and not Mapperton. You do. Right. No, and you do. I don't. I simply don't. Life moves on. How could I possibly feel that? No, but during... I was too young to get attached I to. remember having a conversation with you when you said that you were rather sad. That the, the, the whole point was the inheriting from a long line of people in through the family, about, I don't know, what, 20 years ago? And that, that it was really rather sad that, you had, that we had to move. Yeah, that, well, Luke feels... I will tell you that Luke, when Luke and I came here in December, we... We came here just to take a photo on the outside and we happened to be here when it was open for its Christmas fair. We couldn't believe it. And um, I, Luke and I walked around for an hour and I can get quite emotional and he didn't, he didn't say a word. Not a, not a word was spoken. And I think Luke feels, you know, it was quite poignant for him and he feels sad that your father felt he had to sell it. Mm. The relationship with the family is everywhere. It is the family. This is the family. The carvings, the, the lozenges, the stained glass, uh, you know, and even evoking your memories today, that is the family. And, it, and it's, for me, I love listening to your stories because I'm trying to imagine it and envision it, but there's a sadness for me as well because the story stops with you both. It would have been rather wonderful to have lived here. And um, it was wonderful, the Vicar. Yeah. I'll just say one thing about the school, though. They have been extremely generous to the family. The, those teachers who yes. know about yeah. the family history. And we have been welcomed back here at any time. Of course. And so, you know, I feel also that we've come to terms with the changes that have come here. Yes, um, and I mean, yeah. think of it, of it being used by hundreds of children over these years. That's delightful. You yes. know, we were six wandering about in here. Now there are hundreds of them. Yes. And I, all that is wonderful. Mm. Yes. Seeing the two of you together has just, has been something I will never, sorry, I'm going to, but never She's going to cry, I have a feeling. Because it's, I think it's extraordinary. And I think seeing the two of you together, brother and sister, and reminiscing, and it's, that's what sweet. life is about. You are sweet. So, Julie, we're yeah. going to look at the archives and the photographs and we're going to relive again <laughs> yeah. and again. I <laughs> yes, know. we will. I know. Yes, and that's, we've you got know. lots of those. But being able to, for me to spend time with both of you is really special. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. He always says perfect. When yeah, he does. When we're not he sure does. it is. Yes, it's actually did we get that on camera? I love that. That was, I liked that um, we're ending this way. Sort of a, a photo on camera and we'll all walk out together. Walking out together. Arm in arm so we don't That's blow over. Right, where are we going to go? Which way, John? This way. <laughs> John's taking me this we're way. You'll have to run, girls. <laughs>Today, I want to give you, alongside Tom, much more Tom um, than, than me, really a history of the fabric of this extraordinary building. It's more or less a thousand years old, the site here. So it's easiest to remember it as uh, being 
five periods of history, really. Okay. So the first building on the site here at Hinchinbrook that we know of was a, a Saxon church, which was then rebuilt um, by the Normans uh, around 1100. Okay. And uh, we think then that was the basis around which a nunnery was established around 1200. So that became the second main period of Hinchinbrook's right. history. Right, was um, the nunnery, the yes. Nunnery. And they, they remained here quite happily until um, Henry VIII came along uh, in 1536 and dissolved the nunneries. Right. And Hinchinbrook was one of the first to go. When they were moved out, uh, Hinchinbrook was granted to the Cromwell family, another very important uh, mm -hmm. English. I mean, we are family. really in the birthplace, not here, but this area is the birthplace of Oliver Cromwell. That's right. Huntington, yes. Indeed. And we're, in a sense, very lucky that they didn't do a total demolition job. Uh, and as we'll see as we walk around the house, there's uh, a footprint of the old nunnery still just sort of visible right. in the layout of the, the house itself. Right. Uh, so then, so then, so we've got obviously then, then from the Cromwells, then we've obviously have the Montagues, and that's a large part of this, almost 350 years. Yes, they, they move in in 1627 and move yes. out in 1955. And then, of course, the present day of Hinchingbrook is a school, which is what, what you attended. And it's yeah. a very large school, isn't it? It is. It's one it's of the largest comprehensives. It's yes. just short of 2,000 pupils. And yeah. um, most of them are uh, occupying the site of the north. Uh, of the house itself, where the gardens, uh, the kitchen gardens would have originally right, been. Right. In a sense, this room is one of the oldest and one of the most modern rooms in the house because as we see it today is how it was enclosed by the 8th Earl in 1909. Um, so prior to that, it, for much of its history, it had been an open garden in the <gasps> centre of the house. I didn't know that. Um, so, so that means seven Earls of Sandwich live, th this was a garden. This yes, an open, an open courtyard in the, in the centre. Really where we're standing now is the original medieval footprint of the central cloister of the nunnery, which stood here in the medieval period. Yeah. So you can sort of imagine the, the corridor which leads around the outside of this room would have been the cloister walk of the nunnery uh, all the way around. Right. Let's carry on and um, we're going to stick with this theme of right now of the nunnery. So now I'm just really envisioning the cloister here, yes. just going all the way around. Oh yes. Behind us here, we have the Norman archway, which was revealed in the 1960s, right. um, when the building was being renovated to become the school. And they were, the, the workmen were sort of restoring this part of the wall and they realized that this had been bricked up by red Tudor brick. And, it was actually hiding one of the original Norman archways. So this room, now called the chapter house room, mm. unsurprisingly was the chapter house of the nunnery, which was sort of the administration center. And then with that same sort of sense that the walls are hiding the history. Yes. If we just look up here, we can see. So I'm in the cloister here. Indeed. And are you looking up here? And we're looking that? up here wow. and we can see a Norman lancet window and it would have been looking out onto the, onto the cloister itself. And the north door of the church would have been somewhere just about here where the door into the library is. Okay, okay, incredible. I mean, wonderful. That's what's incredible about these country houses, if you like, and especially here in, in England, and, and of course in Great Britain, all throughout Great Britain, is that it's building upon building upon building. It's this transformation. That's right, um, yes. Which is just incredible. And what, what every sort of family or owner or custodian, they kind of put their mark on it. That's right. Once uh, it became that country house. But it started, a lot of the country houses did start as something else. Absolutely. A nunnery yeah. or a monastery. Particularly when the, the monasteries were dissolved um, and they were granted out to the gentry or noble supporters of the crown. Yeah. So many houses, therefore have their origins in monastic buildings. Yes, so we're still though looking at a little bit of the nunnery in here, is that That's right? That's right, yeah. So this room, as you can see from the shape, is very long um, and it's sitting on the original footprint of the medieval church. Ah. And so we would have just walked through the north door, roughly where the library door is. Yes. And we would be looking up towards uh, the choir and the altar. 
at this far end of the library. Wonderful. So, you can, I mean, really get a sense of how this was yes. a, a church. You, you absolutely can. That's I right. mean, it is, it's extraordinary. Before the Montagues, it was the Cromwell family over three generations from 1538 until 1627 who called Hinchingbrook home. And it was the Cromwells who transformed the buildings from their monastic roots into a house. So this, this room that we're heading to now, um, for the majority of the time that the Montagues were here, was a series of bedrooms. But as we see it now, as an open single room, um, was much more as it would have appeared in the Cromwellian period. Ah, okay. So the Montagues closed this off. There would have been a bedroom here with the, with the bow window, which yes. you can see, which Hinchinbrook's biggest feature, really, yeah. externally. Um, and there would have been a corridor running down here. But That's right. As we see it now, this is as the Cromwells built it um, when they uh, took, took the nunnery over. Right. And so the upstairs of the church becomes the long gallery. And, um, Fantastic. I mean, that is fan You know, I always wondered if Hinchingbrook had a long gallery because yes. I visit other historic houses. And many of you remember, if you watch Rockingham Castle, um, that beautiful long gallery there. And I always wondered if Hinchingbrook had one. And here it is. It is. Yes. And it was created by the Cromwells. That's right. And we can see sort of some of the work that they've, uh, they've done when they've arrived. So this, this stonework here was one of the original church windows in the of upper course. part of the, the church. And my, I'm going to tell you, we're standing just above the library. Right yes, now. that's right. So yeah. you, this is the church. Yes. We, are, we are in the church. We are just above the library. Incredible. And you can see the red Tudor brick has been used to, to fill the, the windows uh, yes. in this part. And this, incredible. And, and this was uncovered when you started the, the restoration, when it became right. a school, to, to knock down yeah. the walls that the Montagues had made. That's right. And to bring it back into a, a, to a large room. But the, one of the best features that they found was this fireplace, which is certainly a Tudor fireplace. Um, and for us, it's, it's really lucky for us that we can date it to the first Cromwell owner, uh, which is Richard Cromwell, because of the decoration that we can see. Right. So if you look very carefully, you can spot Richard Cromwell's initials in the decoration. Yes, you can. Just here, yeah, Just well there. found. But not too grand there. You'd think no, it would pretty. be some enormous, I don't know, coat of arms or something with his initials, but, That's but right. rather small. But there's, there's lovely little uh, sort of mementos of the past here because we can see there's some graffiti, oh. which some people think might be from students, but it's in Latin, so probably isn't. Um, and uh, we did have somebody uh, translate some of these, and they, they were lines from love sonnets. Uh, so okay. very much from the period, and we'll see a date just You can here. see a date, 1566. Yeah. And this lovely scroll, scroll work. So that's the Cromwell period, and again, only 90 years. Now we've got to move on to, the to my period. <laughs> the Montague yes. period. There's one room where the presence of the Montague family shines brightly. This is my favorite room. I have to say, Tom, library, it's my favorite yes. room, the library. There's a sense of calm in here. The sense of calm, and then I'm just overwhelmed by the lozenges. <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed the, by the Montague The Montague heraldry. imprint yeah. here in this library is rather extraordinary. If we look at the far end of the library, we can see some painted glass depicting so the life and death of the first yeah. Earl. Uh, on the left-hand side, we can see uh, the return of Charles II in 1660 at the Restoration. Yes. So after the period where oh Oliver Cromwell goodness. had been Lord Protector. And Edward carried Charles II back to England on board his flagship. Uh, it'd been called the, the Naseby, which right. was one of the great victories over, over, over the Royalists. And so he hurriedly renamed it the Royal Charles to bring the King back right, to England. Right, right, yeah, no, no, And course. so we can see him here kneeling before Charles II. Uh, so that's him kneeling before yeah. Charles II, yes. And then we can see on the right-hand side mm. the death of the first Earl 12 years later in 1672. The Battle of Sol Bay. That's right, yeah. yeah. And so he, was, he went down with his ship and I, most accounts suggest that most of the crew escaped, um, as you can see even in the painting there, sort of on the, on the ship's boats. But, right. Uh, uh, he wanted to stay, yes, he, he wanted went. to stay. That's, that's, right. that's a very noble... 
um, act. I mean, this is just an extraordinary. Yes, um, and it's surrounded uh, by this this great record of the of the Montagues of Hinchinbrook, because we have his coat of arms uh, alongside those yes. of his wife Jemima. Yes, uh, and then you have their children in these coats of arms so surrounding. Th these are all of their children. That's right. You can you can then follow the family tree because off to the left we see their first son Edward, ah. who, who was Viscount Hinchinbrook originally, and then uh, his marriage to Anne Boyle and their children, daughter of the Earl of Burlington, and then their children. They had three, another Edward. That's right. Elizabeth and Richard both died unmarried. Do we know what happened to the second Earl? Yes, we just have oh, to turn I this way. This. this is brilliant. <laughs> this is unbelievable, this record. All in gorgeous stained glass. So right. here we can see he's married um, Elizabeth Wilmot, the daughter of the Earl of Rochester. The glass windows that we've seen so far mm. were commissioned by the fourth Earl in the 1760s. All of these? All of those ah. uh, that we've just seen. Okay. Um, and then the seventh or eighth Earl then decided to pick up the, uh, the family tree. Okay. And we can see them continued in a slightly different style, uh, noticeably more Victorian uh, style here. Yes. Uh, but continuing to tell the story of the family. It's not just the interior of Hinchingbrook where there are still glimpses of the Montague family's time here. Outside, Tom shows me where the estate buildings and surrounding land were remodeled in the 1960s into a school. You know, I see these aerial shots of Hinchingbrook, and I saw these lovely stables. That's right. And I always wondered what happened to them. Yes. <laughs> and and, and, and they're, obviously they've turned into the school. Sadly, the decision was taken to take the stable blocks and cottages down, which surrounded this courtyard. Um, but at the time, they were, they were relatively new. Um, they had only been uh, reconstructed in the 1890s. Right. So they were less than 100 years old. At the time of them being, uh, exactly. being pulled down, right. Yes. So, and I, I can see that. I mean, of course, when you look at those photos, you think you could have just preserved that. But yeah. you're right, it was, it was considered a new build when That's they were right. pulling, when they yeah. pulled, when they pulled them down. And I think it was in, in pretty rotten repair as well. Right. Because of course. with the family having moved out in 55, um, and then the restoration work not really starting until the mid late 60s. They had been derelict for nearly 10 years. Right. The stable block was adjacent to the most amazing kitchen garden. Where we're heading now as we walk through what's now the school site is the original kitchen gardens, uh, which would have provided food and vegetables for the for the house kitchen. I mean, we're still in yeah, the kitchen still, garden. still in the kitchen gardens. <laughs> we, when we get to the end of this building, you can see the old kitchen garden wall pick up uh, and kept in in uh, in place. In so place. it gives you okay. an idea of where the... Oh, just, here, right here. Yeah, right up along the side of this building. <gasps> so so you good. have kept this. Yeah, so you can this still see the see footprint of the... The footprint of the, of the kitchen garden and the so wall. So then behind here, so we're now moved on behind yeah. beyond the kitchen garden, what are we moving into We're going here? into the gardens now. Okay. Um, and in fact, this garden just here uh, was a Japanese garden created by the 8th Earl. Originally, there was a little tea house in here uh, of which there are photographs still surviving. This, and there's water down here. Yes, yeah, so there was a little, little pond. Little pond uh, within the Japanese within garden. Within the Japanese garden. There was a bridge originally sort of going across. Right. Right, uh, lovely. So these all would have been formal gardens, you think? Certainly around the house, house. itself right. in, the, in the Tudor period. And even in the buck print of 1730, we can see that there are sort of formal pathways laid around right. the immediate uh, lawns of the house. Okay. So, um, okay. but this is one part of the formal gardens that survived. It's the, the rose garden, this is, um, by the friends of Hinchinbrook, who do oh. an immense amount of work yeah. in just replacing the roses and uh, Wonderful. trying to keep the, the, the original garden to keep it, as it yeah. was. Yeah. And I remember watching the footage of um, Hinchingbrook and you can see rosemary going through. I, th I think it was th through this, oh, was this through garden here, here through which this is the... <laughs> so this is, this is where she was, this yes, is where she right. went. 
<laughs> so I just think it's wonderful that I'm able to kind of walk in in um, you know my husband's grandmother's steps, and he was very close to Rosemary as well um, here as well. So it's that's what it is. It's all about walking in the steps of it is yes. of ancestors and and family members, but also seeing how it's how it's evolved. Tom's being very nice and letting me go first. <laughs> so we're coming out onto the roof, the lead roof of Hinchingbrook. And this is where we really want to talk to you about and explain that we're, we, as we started this film, that there were sort of five periods of people inhabiting uh, this house, if you like, and five periods. And now it's a school. That's right. So yeah. we're in the fifth period. This is now Hinchingbrook School. We touched on it earlier, but this is also still a grade one listed building. So it's of exceptional historical value. And the stories around these buildings, which we've told today, those are so important. But the upkeep of these buildings, and I know this firsthand just from Mapperton, which is, you know, a fraction of the size of Hinchingbrook. This is still a grade one listed home. The school doesn't receive any extra funding in its uh, no, educational it's a, budget. Right, um, it's a state school, so it's not a private school, which would then be, of course, funded privately right. by, you know, the, 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 the parents of the right. students. So, and you don't have the luxury, if you like, of opening up the house to the public six months out of the year, no. seven months out of the year, or having the amount of weddings that we have, or a cafe, or embarking on, you know, a rewilding project. You know, when we walked around Hinchingbrook today, I, of course, have an eye, having lived at Mapperton for a while now, of like, ooh, that needs to be restored, that needs to be repaired. Mm. But the biggest project here is the roof. And I have filmed with so many other historic house, house owners who said, it's, if you don't have the roof, you don't have the house. That's right, yes. So we're, so, we're facing a, the next big battle in Hinchinbrook's survival is the eventual replacement of this lead roof and the, the lead work which continues on the other levels as well. It's probably got a, a hundred year lifespan and we've got 10 years left on that. Um, we're already starting to get leaks and ingresses of water. So the, the necessity to replace this, which is gonna be an immense sum of money is, is looming just around the corner. Yes, in a month. I mean, the, repairing the roof is an immense sum of money, as you said, and, and Let's be clear here, you can't replace a lead roof with slate. No. You, it's like for like. Because it's a grade one listed building, this has to be replaced yes. with lead. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is very special because we're, we're really limiting the number of people who come up onto the, yes. onto the leads. Um, and one of the things that we did before we came out was to check our, our footwear was, uh, didn't have any stones no. because we found that that's starting to um, puncture holes in, in the lead as it gets thinner. So where are we gonna head? How, how brave are you feeling? I'm, I'm brave. Right. Brave. Well, we how could... brave is the cameraman feeling though? Brave. <laughs> brave. <Yeah. laughs> now, if we climb up here. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see this. If we venture around the corner, yes. we'll be able to see the reverse of Elizabeth I's coat of arms. Well, if you just head to your right between these two, yep. two roofs, oh, it will take us onto the, the top of the bow window. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is unbelievable. Oh, this is crazy. Here we are. <laughs> this is, can I touch it? Just Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So you get a sense of the scale, which is rather nice. Yeah, you really do. So we have the line of England on the right hand side. Yeah. And then of course, because Elizabeth was a Tudor, we have the Dragon of Wales as the supporter on this side. There we go. But you get a nice view of the tributary of the river Great Ouse running across the floodplain just in front of the house. I mean, And we it's... think that's where Hinchinbrook gets its name. Oh yes, I was going so, to ask. So there's a suggestion that the, this, this land was owned by the Hintzel family in Saxon times. Okay. And so this, this brook, this yes. river would yep. have been known as Hintzel's Brock. And then over time it's, 
it's emerged it's with Jim Brook. Brook. That's right. I, so. I'm so happy you answered that question because actually it was on my list today and I ah, realized I excellent. forgot to ask well, it, but you to read, it. You've read my mind. <laughs> I'm so grateful to Tom for giving me this rooftop tour and telling me about the origin of our family name. What a sensational way to end my visit to Hinchingbrook House.